Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you an update in the TLT. That is the iShares 20-plus year Treasury bond ETF, probably the most active, actively traded high-volume uh, Treasury-related ETF out there. Uh, and I've been covering this for years now. Um, but uh, I just want to kind of give you a heads up. The last time I provided an update was in early June when we settled above this three, four month descending channel top that it held nicely prior to that. And having closed above it in June, I'd mentioned in the last video how we can anticipate this longer term. Uh, really, this goes back, um, you know, this goes back almost two years. This structure here is trend defining in its own right. I'll get to that in a moment. But 96.35 dropping 18 cents a week. Next week, this number will be 96.17. If we close above 96.35 today, I see bullish continuation. Well, I'll just tell you right now, I see bullish continuation over the next several months to 106.64. And that is a longer term, four year descending channel top uh, that I think really defines the trend of the uh, interest rate cycle that we've seen for the last four years. You know, you've got the uh, COVID low, if you will, in interest rates. And of course, like any treasury instrument, this is inversely uh, proportional to interest rates themselves. So the average, if you will, 20 year interest rate uh, has been dropping. Uh, as this index or this uh, ETF has been rising for the last three months. So it's inverse. So as interest rates drop, this instrument goes up. And so interest rates have been dropping. Uh, just this morning, we had employment report, you know, for the month of August it was weaker than expected. Lower interest rates assumed that the Fed will cut, I think is really what's being factored in here. But technically speaking, if we close today, that is Friday, August 2nd, above 96.35, I am anticipating 106.64. Over the next two to three months, uh, I think that's realistic. There's also a, another channel top that is converging with it presently. This will be a range of resistance for a while. And if we get up here in a year in a hurry, it'll be an important range of resistance that you can sell. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to say that if we close above 96.35, I see no good reason to be short the TLT as we move through the rest of the third quarter and into the early fourth. Over the next two to three months, 106.64 is likely. In other words, anticipating continued weakening continued lowering of interest rates uh, as we move into September, October, November. Over that time frame, 106.64 expected, dropping 35 cents a week. Now, if you happen to buy the TLT or reach for, say, 105, 106 strike out of the money calls that don't expire for at least six months, uh, they're going to want to take profits on that move as we move into that 106.64 area. This four-year channel top is well-suited to contain not only buying through the rest of the year, but possibly through all of next year. And so, while we're seeing interest rates drop now and likely to continue south for the near term over the next two to three months, as we continue into later 25, uh, that interest rate, uh, you know, the, I guess what I'm really saying is here is the the um, the rising of rates, uh, the up cycle in interest rates is not over long term, say between now and the end of 25, we could top out at 106.64 and fall away again, uh, possibly uh, to not only the low that was put out in October of 23 at 82.42, uh, but possibly even lower. I mean, this is a long-term bear trend. We could fall away from here substantially in the year or two following a test of 106.64. Now, of course, if we were to close above 106.64, uh, the uh, cycle is over. I would, I'm going to go out on a limb and just say that if we close above this 106.64 formation over the next few months, we are uh, probably in a more recessionary environment where the uh, perception is that uh, the market will continue or is showing continued weakening and that we actually enter perhaps uh, a recession uh, Q4, Q1 of 25. I'm just just sort of spitballing here, uh, but that would be, I think, the likely outcome. If we close above 106.64, we have a weakening economy relative to what we see right now. And we could top out at 106.64, as I say, uh, through all of next year. Now, uh, the day is young. I'm recording this 10 minutes into the opening bell. We are present above the 9635 formation, trading 9693 last. And um, it wouldn't take much to ease back to settle the day Friday, August 2nd 
at 96.35 or lower. And if that is the case, uh, then uh, we are there is no buy signal. This is an end of week settlement above 96.35. So if we settle at 96.35 or lower, this market's still susceptible to falling away through the rest of the year, possibly back to this channel bottom within a couple, two, three months. I don't really consider this to be a significant support area right now, 87.68. I just showed it for the buy signal that did occur in the last video in early June. In fact, if we were to fall away from here, FYI, and not not close above 96.35, I probably would look for something like this as a realistic outcome. Two to three month sell off into the mid 80s and dropping slightly. Uh, and uh, by that point, I will have updated you anyway on what's going on in the charts. But I will leave you with this chart here. It looks like we're poised for bullish continuation into September, October, 106.64 in reach, expected within two to three months if we settle today in the TLT, that is August 2nd, above 96.35. I'm going to leave it at that for this particular Wicked Stocks update on the TLT. You have a great day.